Okay, you guys. So, first product of the day. Um, we are Brew Spice. Uh, we are here. I'm, I'm Robert Michael Jones, and this is Eva. And I already said it, but we are Brew Spice. Um, Brew Spice is a collection of different spice blends that makes it easy for anybody to perfectly pair their beer with what they're eating. So, um, yeah. We started out with, uh, with the problem of, uh, of, you know, it's... You can you can order food in any restaurant, and you can you can kind of blindly order drinks, or you can ask the server to kind of pair your your food with what you're drinking. We want to make it kind of seamless for anybody to be able to do this. We have a website that's up right now called BruceSpice.co, and you can actually uh, add the different spices that you love. Uh, we have four of them right now, um, and you can choose what you're going to eat, and see what goes together really well. Um, so I've been brewing beer for a couple of years. I, there are a couple of different items that go into beer. Uh, so you have your hops, your malt, your yeast, and your water. We took out a couple of those, and we took the spices and put them into a bottle. Uh, those spices are different blends for different styles. We have an IPA. We have a Belgian wheat, an Oktoberfest, and a stout. My personal favorite is our IPA. It is a great collection of uh, vanilla. I, we use citra hops, lemon, and a little bit of tangerine. It's very delicious. Um, and you can put it on any kind of food that you want. We have snacks that you can put it on. We love it on popcorn. Uh, it goes really good on home-cooked meals and also goes good on anything as far as like you order seamless, sprinkle it on your seamless order, and you can pair it with whatever you're drinking. Your IPA goes with your, your souvlaki now. Um, and like I said, we do have four products. We have the Belgian wheat, the Oktoberfest, the IPA, and the stout. Um, we're expanding, but we are also looking to meet the demands of all the people that we, so we did research in the beginning to see what the most popular beer, beer styles are in America, and we found that those are the four most popular um, in America. So we decided to base our spices off those flavor profiles. Um, these are four of our people that we are kind of basing what we're going to sell on. Um, Rodney is 25 years old. He's a grad student. He drinks beer, which is cool. Um, and he cooks, and he really values simplicity in his food. Um, Jessica is another person that we use. Uh, 22 years old, she uh, she's a retail buyer for uh, for a clothing store, and she does not drink beer. One of the cool applications of Brew Spice is you don't actually have to drink beer to enjoy Brew Spice because the collections are based on the cool flavor profiles that make the beer, but are not alcoholic. Um, Tim is 44 years old. He's a financial specialist. Check on the drinks beer, check on the cooks, and he values quality. In Brew Spice, we use all non-GMO, organic, uh, and vegan uh, products, and they're also all gluten-free, which is cool for anybody to be able to use. Um, Amanda is 31. She's a dietitian. She does both drinks and cooks, and she likes nutrition. Hops actually have a very cool quality to them. Uh, which is big in the spice industry right now, uh, is the health benefits of spices. Hops actually have the ability to, uh, to make you fall asleep easier. It relaxes you at the end of the day. That's actually part of the reason why we drink beer um, at the end of the day. So we put brew spice in a couple of different restaurants um, and gave it about, out to a bunch of different people. And took a, they, a, a bunch of people took some surveys and we got some cool quotes over here, just little quick one-liners. Maya said that's delicious. She's a gluten-free whiz. And then we have the pizzeria chef that, you know, he would love to sell this. And these are real quotes, actually. Um, and then, yeah, so different restaurants, different people using it for different applications. And I'm going to actually hand this over to Eva now. She's going to talk a little bit about the statistics. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me introduce you to the market pretty um, quickly. So... This is how it looks like. 80%, 85% um, of the market is pretty open since only 6% is taken, 15% is taken by um, major spices. Um, it is projected 
and uh, also validated projections that the market will grow um, above 2019, um, above 16 billion. Um, this is um, our competitor map, and uh, we're also included snack brands since we're pairing beer um, taste with um, different snacks. Um, this is um, a kind of snippet of our uh, idea of how we're going to sell. We're looking to enter through farmer's market because it's the easiest and um, people are able to actually touch it and taste it. And um, eventually through um, brand awareness to our website, from there um, we'll be able to provide the best cost for our clients. Um, we have our financials up um, since we're up on time. Um, I just wanted to show you our journey, which will include it. Oh, we did, um, which will conclude everything. But we did major pivot uh, two months ago. So um, right now we have four different spices and um, validated the market with an idea that everyone loves. Thank you. So speaking of what is your next move, what do you think your next steps are? Uh, our next step, so um, yeah. our next step is, uh, so we are, one of our big things is brand awareness. We really want to kind of grow that brand awareness quickly uh, within the market because brew spice is not something that you can patent. It is something that uh, if a brewery wanted to start this, then they could. What we have is something special is the website that we're using um, to be able to direct people to uh, use different recipes for that. And from there, we hope to be able to build enough brand awareness after the next year to be able to go to individual breweries and have them have their own brew spice so they can sell their own brew spice under our code sponsorship name. And uh, yeah, they can, we can use the spices that they have uh, in their beer to perfectly tailor a brew spice for them. So we, uh, so based on uh, an average of uh, premium spices on the market, we came to eight dollars uh, for the price. Um, we, for our overhead, we're meeting a uh, an average of two dollars and sixty six cents per bottle right now with the amount that we are uh, that we're ordering, just small amounts to be able to create samples. Once we increase. We know that we can bring it down to $1.87, uh, like for the next thousand, for like, yeah. Different parts of the, the machine kind of coming together, like the more we order, obviously, both the cheaper we get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add, since we're planning on using Etsy and um, Shopify, of course, they have their own charges, so we'll be able to bring lower price for them than um, the $8.795 where still considering on that. Um, so we'll have different pricing depending on where we sell it, but the end customer will ultimately get the same price. Cool. Yeah, I would just add, you know, there's like craft beer festivals too, which yeah, would probably so be I like... Yeah, I do marketing for craft beer festivals as well. Like, like specifically, I did the uh, the New York Craft City... Uh, sorry. Uh, New York City uh, uh, Brewer's Choice Festival back in March, and... Uh, on the 27th, I'm actually going to be doing the Great Brooklyn uh, Grill Out, which is going to be at LAU and doing, it's uh, going to be six different breweries and, and people that grill all over. And then I'm also in charge of uh, social media for all of New York City's Craft Beer Month coming up in July. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of how we came into this. <laughs> so have you actually talked to any breweries? Uh, so yes, we did talk to, uh, we talked to actually a bunch back in March um, for a completely different product. Um, but no, we have not gone to any breweries for Brew Spice right now. Yeah. Um, so when you had your original idea and you went to whoever you've spoken with, what did you find out and why did you change? So what we found out, um, what we found out was that to be able to deliver beer, in the way that we were going to do it. We had a beer customization, so you choose the type of beer that you love, and then you 
design a label for it and you can modify the label, you can have personalizations on the exterior. But the problem was that uh, for delivering, to be able to deliver beer, you either have to have the brewery do it or the distributor do it, or you have to get a license, which is a lot of money, not very in the spirit of startup and lean. So yeah, it was gonna be a little bit of a journey. Some of the pivots that actually that busy, busy slide um, kind of explains a little bit. Um, so what we actually did was the um, the first pivot, which was to event planners. It's right the in the green, in the middle. So we, as we found out that there is some logistics that's out, out of our reach to control if the beer is going to spill, if the beer is going to break on the delivery, and also how much it costs to the end buyer. Um, we, uh, we decided to reach out to event planners, but this was limiting the market that we wanted to reach, as well as um, was going away from our passion, which is bringing the benefits for, of beer to people. So that's why we did the major pivot of cooking with beer. Thank you.